Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about the fourth part of our series on loving the Lord. So if you remember when we did the 21 day challenge, one of the revelation revolutions was to love God. That's the first and foremost commandment. And we've been talking the past three weeks about um, ways that we can love God. God more, or facets of loving God more. And we started with understanding how much God loves us in week one, and week two we talked about repentance, and week three we talked about returning to the Lord, so a 180 degree turn from sin toward the Lord. And this week we're going to discuss what God's Word means in relation to loving Him more. So let's get started. If you'll get your Bibles out, the first, we're going to look at three verses today. And the first verse is Hebrews 4.12. For the word of the Lord is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and of discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All right, so that verse is really chock full of great information. So we're going to hopefully do it some justice and break it down just a little bit here. So in the verse, when it talks about the word is living and active, it means obviously that it's not dead. It is alive. And because the word is God, it is alive. It is living and breathing and and God. <laughs> so there's no denying that it is flat and that it's not flat or dead or, or has no life to it. It is very much alive. And because it's alive, it produces effects. Okay? So when we are reading the Word and touched by the Word and hearing the Word, it is having an effect on us and through us. All right? Going a little further in the verse, when it talks about sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow. This is an analogy. Basically, it's an analogy. It's comparing the soul and the spirit with joints and marrow. So if you think about, um, if you think about joints, they're the hard outer part of the bone. Um, and they're, they're thick. They're hard to pierce, right? Whereas the marrow is the soft, tender, living inner part of the bone. And so let's compare this now to the soul and the spirit. The soul is where we have our thoughts and our emotions. That's the, the part of us that's our nature, maybe even our temperament. Um, and it really is it can be our outer shell, so to speak. Um, whereas the spirit is what we are when we come to know Christ. It's, it's the living Holy Spirit in us. And so it's, it's very living, just like the, the marrow is living. It's not that harder outer uh, shell or, or nature. It's the rebirth and the, and the living part of who we are, that we can only be when we accept Christ. So, if you revisit that, the Word of God being like a double-edged sword, it's going to pierce deep enough into this um, joint and into the marrow or through the soul and into the spirit to show us the real truth of our thoughts and our motives and ourselves. The Word is going to reveal what really needs to be. So sometimes we, we think or feel things, and we've all done this, that aren't true. And this is where God's Word can come in and be very um, beneficial in revealing what is really true. Not what the world says is true, but what is actually true and what is a living, breathing truth in our lives. And will give us life as well. Okay, so brief summary on that verse but part of your homework will be to go deeper in one of these verses, so that might be the verse that you choose. Okay, so that's kind of the first point 
that I'd like to make about God's Word is that it is alive. Um, the second point I'd like to make is going to take us to uh, Mark chapter 14, verses 49b, the second part of that verse, through verse 50. Um, and I'll read it to you. Well, basically, it's, it's just, you can read it, but it's describing when Judas betrays Jesus. And um, he singles Jesus out, and he brings a crowd to uh, basically uh, capture Jesus. And this is, you know, very pertinent since this was just what happened before he rose on Easter, right? So it's a very timely message. But so Judas betrays Jesus, and he comes and he points him out. And then Jesus is captured. And while this is happening, Jesus says to Judas, Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. So the second point is, God's word is truth, and it will be fulfilled. No matter what, there are promises and truths in God's word that are going to happen. And uh, Jesus when he didn't have anything else, he turned to the truth of God's word. And he wanted God's will that was in God's word to be done. This is what Jesus says when he knows that his life on earth is going to be over. And when he knows that everyone has betrayed him. And there isn't anyone who is going to save him from what is meant to be which is to die, you know, for our sins uh, on the cross. And he doesn't um, want to be saved. He wants God's word to come to fruition because he knows that that will truly bring life. Okay, so the point of this verse for us um, could be that when there are going to be times in our lives when we feel abandoned by people and when we don't understand the circumstances around us and when we can't control the circumstances around us and the only thing we're going to find comfort in is going to be God's Word. So if you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't been there, you, it will probably happen. Um, but the good news is we always have the Lord and we always have God's Word. So when, when we don't have something to rely on um, or, or what we're used to relying on maybe that's our worldly things, when we don't have that we want to be able to turn to God's Word. We want to do that anyway but sometimes we get confused about what we're supposed to be relying on and what's really true because the world tells us so many things and so it's in those moments that the word is going to be very active and very living as it always is but we're going to really if we turn to it we'll be able to recognize that and realize that that's more important than anything else anything else that's basically falling apart around us so that's the second um, point I want to make about God's Word. And again, if you want to look that verse up, it's Mark 14, 49b through 50. And then the third point is um, we're going to read Luke 8, verses 4 through 8. And basically, this is going to be describing the condition of our hearts. And whatever condition our heart is, is going to determine how we receive God's Word. So we may you know, mentally know that His Word is sharper than any two-edged sword and we might know it's living and active and we might know in our minds that we can't always rely on what's around us. We're going to have to, you know, we may, it may come to a point one day where we only have God's Word in a certain circumstance and we're going to need to rely on that but in order to understand God's Word and rely on God's Word, we have to cultivate the condition of our heart in such a way that we can receive it and really understand it. And so Luke 8, verses 4 through 8, is the parable of the sower. And so that's what we're going to go over now. Um, if you look at this verse, or I'm sorry, these verses in verse 5, or verse 4 and 5 actually, the sower went out to sow 
his field and as he did some of the seed fell along the path and it was trampled and birds devoured it okay so that's one thing that happened <laughs> when the sower went to sow seed uh, the second thing that happened was some of the seed fell on rock and it grew up but it withered away because it didn't ha it wasn't deep in the soil it was on this rocky ground and there wasn't any moisture that it could retain that's verse six the third thing that happened to the seeds is that some of them fell among the thorns and the thorns grew up and kind of choked them that's verse seven and the fourth thing that happened is some of the seed fell on the good soil and it grew and yielded a hundredfold. All right, so we can take these four verses and compare them to the condition of our heart. So let's do that now. If our heart, going back to verse 5, if our heart is like a trampled ground that's hardened or um, hardened by sin or bitter, um, because we haven't repented of some sin, then we'll be unable to accept God's message. If we have a hard heart, if we have bitterness in our lives, we're not going to get it. We're not going to get God's word. We might read it, but we're not going to get, we're not going to understand it. It's going to be like that hard, trampled ground. Okay, if, uh, if you look at verse 6, if our heart is like the shallow soil, we will hear the word of God and mentally we'll hear it, um, but the truth won't really penetrate down to our heart and out through our actions. You won't really see the fruit of hearing God's word because we won't be acting upon it. It'll be like that shallow soil that it just kind of, after we hear it, it gets washed away. All right, let's look at verse 7. If our heart is like the thorny soil, where all those thorns were and they were choking out the seeds, um, if, if we're like, if our heart's like that, then um, we're going to be distracted by things of the world. They're going to, the things of the world, our distractions are going to choke the life out of God's Word. They're going to take precedent over God's Word. We're going to focus more on the things of the world than we are on God's word. And so, again, it won't produce any righteousness. But if our heart is like the seed that fell on the good soil that has been cultivated, and this is what God wants for us, of course, we will be able to hear the word and apply it, and it will, we will produce fruits. It might not be right then and there, but over time or in due time, those fruits will show as long as we are practicing that, as long as we are hearing it and putting it into action, we will produce fruit. And that's the soil, that's the condition of our heart that the Lord wants us to come to Him with. That's the condition of our heart where we not only can hear His Word and understand it, we will retain it and we will desire to do something with it within us and act it out and serve others and that sort of thing. So the condition of our heart can vary. It can vary and be one of these four things and it will just really depend on how we cultivate it, what we do to make cultivating our heart a priority, how we take care of our heart, what we look at, what we, um, how we spend our time, uh, are we spending our time with the Lord? Are we spending our time um, confessing our sins and repenting and returning to Him? That's all has to do with how we cultivate our heart. And also, just because we um, come to the Lord with a, a very fertile heart <laughs> one day doesn't mean that that's going to happen the next day. We have to um, practice daily turning to Him and cultivating our heart. It's something that needs practice, and it's certainly something that I think the enemy will try to wiggle his way in if we're not practicing it. If we think, oh, yeah, I've got this. You know, I cultivated my heart yesterday, so I'm good today. It's probably not the case. It's a, it's a daily, and, and not the case because things happen daily, um, that we, you know, 
stuff comes up every day that um, can push your buttons <laughs> and or we will create things or we'll be sending and not even know it kind of a thing and and that will create issues for us so um, we have to cultivate our heart every day we have to come before the Lord every day really to get us in a right place to hear and receive his word which is going to be living and active in us and at times it may be the only thing that we have really to hold on to and so knowing God's word and putting these three things into practice um, is going to draw us nearer to him and it's going to help us to love him more not only to know him more but when we know him more we're going to love him more so that's our lesson for today and for homework I thought it would be nice if we could look at one of these three verses and figure out kind of which one is speaking to us where we are right now in our lives. So if we back up a little bit and you look at the Hebrews um, 4.12 verse, how are you or do you believe, first of all, that the word is living? that what the word says is true and it's active in your life and it has meaning for your life today it wasn't something that was just meant for years gone by so it is that something that you believe do you believe it's active are you are you using it in a in a living way are you allowing the holy spirit to use god's word in your life like that so that might be a question you ask yourself if that verse spoke to you if the verse uh, Mark 14, 49 through 50 spoke to you, that's going to be um, the verse about God's word is always going to be fulfilled. Do we believe that? Do we believe that um, God truly does have promises in the Bible that will come to fruition? And do we really want, do we really will for God's word to be um, to come to fruition in our lives? Is that something that we desire? Or are we kind of desiring to maybe do our own thing? So if, if that verse is speaking to you, maybe those are some questions you can ask yourself. Um, and then the last verse was, of course, the parable of the sower and the seed, and that was in Luke. 